Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Boeing Starliner suffers an anomaly on initial launch. Inventor flies Iron Man suit up to 85 miles an hour. And Navy pilots demand changes in on-base weapons policy. Happy Monday and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Sophie Herlock. Boeing's CST-100 Starliner commercial crew vehicle was launched into orbit early Friday morning, but the spacecraft experienced what Boeing called an off-nominal insertion and failed to reach the proper orbit for rendezvous with the International Space Station. Boeing said the guidance and control team have been working to determine their next steps. The spacecraft was reported to be in a stable orbit with electrical power. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine said a lot of things went right, but explained the issue appears to have been an error with the mission elapsed timing system. Because the automation timing was off, the spacecraft began to do burns to try to maintain precise control. And by the time it caught, there was not enough fuel left to achieve the rendezvous orbit. However, the Starliner was in an orbit that allowed it to be brought safely back to Earth at White Sands, New Mexico on Sunday. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you. Welcome back, it's time for today's trip around the patch. A new 8,000 square foot educational laboratory, dubbed Project Sky Lab, is being planned at the Aerospace Center for Excellence, part of the Sun and Fun Expo campus at Lakeland Linder International Airport. The project is aimed at providing a STEM prepared workforce, particularly for the aerospace industry. Citing ongoing issues with recertification of its 737 MAX, Boeing announced it will suspend production of the airliners beginning in January. Throughout the grounding of the 737 MAX, Boeing has continued to build new airplanes, and there are now approximately 400 airplanes in storage. The company has previously stated it would continually evaluate production plans should the MAX grounding continue longer than expected. Delta Private Jets and Wheels Up are partnering to create one of the world's largest owned and managed fleets of private aircraft. When the transaction closes, Wheels Up will have a fleet of more than 190 private aircraft and over 8,000 members and customers. Delta will also hold an equity position in Wheels Up. DreamSoar Incorporated named Lauren Abernathy as the inaugural Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Academic Scholarship recipient. Abernathy is pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical Science with a minor in Aviation Safety at ERAU. She earned her private pilot certificate in 2018 and is currently finishing her instrument rating with immediate plans to pursue commercial certified flight instructor and certified flight instructor instrument ratings. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Finally, a modern, affordable four-seater without compromise. Turbocharged Rotax 915IS power, 155 knot cruise, 800 nautical mile range, 1,000 feet per minute climb, and all that at 8 gallons per hour. Don't compromise. Check out the Sling TSI today at AirplaneFactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. British inventor and founder of Gravity Industries, 
Richard Browning has set a new world record for fastest speed in a body-controlled jet engine-powered wind-guided suit. Browning flew the entirely 3D-printed suit over England's Brighton Pier at speeds of up to 85.06 miles an hour. His previous record in the first variant of the suit was 32.02 miles an hour, but this suit was completely different. He said the suit is much smarter, which gives the wearer the ability to make small adjustments to the power during flight. Browning predicts the suit can go as fast as 150 to 180 miles per hour, but for now he'll work towards incremental speed increases. Browning said flying the suit truly feels like flying in your dreams. A form letter created by dozens of U.S. Navy pilots demands more pilots be allowed to carry side arms on base in the wake of a deadly shooting at Naval Air Station Pensacola. The letter calls a situation that prevents military personnel from carrying firearms and relying on off-base civilian law enforcement for their protection reprehensible. The letter cites a 1992 which makes military bases soft targets with on-base security provided by contracted civilians whose physical fitness requirements and specialized training fall short of the standard service members. The pilots who crafted the letter say they hope the effort will discontinue what has become a severe irony, burdening our service members, that they can be in trusted to fly multi-million dollar aircraft over hostile territory, command companies of infantry into battle, or captain ships around the world, but when back home are not trusted to carry a simple pistol for protection. And that wraps up our show for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more aviation aerospace news any time of the day, head over to aero-news.net. Due to the Christmas and New Year's holiday, we will not have any shows on December 25th, 26th, 31st, or January 1st. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow for an episode of Airborne Amand.